What's going on, everyone? So, if you guys are a real basketball fan, if you guys are die, you know, die hard for whatever team you root for, you guys have probably thought at one point how you your team has completely screwed up in a draft before, you know, getting an absolute bust or just like basically a role player when the player after your choice was a superstar. You had as a Pistons fan, we have done this many times. We got Luke Kennard instead of Donovan Mitchell. The biggest one being Darko Milicic instead of Carmelo Anthony. And so what I thought was I am going to put every team's biggest miss opportunity onto their team. So um, you guys will see what I'm saying, but um, it's basically going to be the player drafted right after. Um, your pick um, if that player was a superstar we're gonna put that player on your team um, so with that uh, let's get in uh, to seeing what the teams are looking like so for the first team we got the 76ers here and we are bringing Kristaps back on the team back in 2015 they chose Jalil Okafor with the third pick Kristaps was picked number four and Kristaps has been an all-star game um, was fantastic uh, before his injury, um, really uh, bounced back after his injury and is doing fantastic for Dallas. For the Bucks, we have Clay Thompson. Back in 2011, the Bucks had the 10th pick and decided to go with Jimmer Fredette, who was an absolute beast in college. Um, but they missed out big with Clay Thompson, who would be an absolute perfect match with uh, Giannis. Um, probably they wouldn't have uh, been able to draft Giannis if they had Clay, but in this world, they do have Giannis. Back all the way in 2001, Chicago, um, with their second round pick, they decided to go with Trenton Hassel. Uh, I don't know much about him. He did play in the league for nine years, though. But uh, they did uh, miss out on Gilbert Arenas, who was an absolute beast in his prime. A scoring machine, as you guys can see here. Absolutely fantastic. Um, this team really sucks, though, still. So it doesn't matter too much. Back in 2012, Cleveland, with their second-round pick, decided to go with Jay Crowder, who has been a solid player. He's definitely been a solid player, but they did miss out on Draymond Green. Um, could have been a very, very nice uh, defensive player uh, next to Kyrie and LeBron James back when LeBron James came back in, um, to, back to Cleveland. So um, he's definitely someone who uh, needs to play within a system. Um, he's not going to be, you know, first or second option, but, you know, as they're that third or fourth guy um he could he can be really really nice for your team for the celtics we had to go all the way back to 1994 um haven't had too many huge misses um with the next player being a superstar for the celtics uh but we do have eddie jones who was picked 10th overall by the lakers boston had pick number nine and went with eric montross so this lineup is absolutely nasty Back in 2001, the Clippers had the second overall pick and decided to go with Tyson Chandler, who in his prime was a very, very solid player, uh, but they did uh, miss out on Pau Gasol, who was at, uh, pick number three uh, by the Atlanta Hawks. Um, so this starting lineup is absolutely ridiculous. With the 28th pick in the 2001 draft, uh, the San Antonio Spurs went with Tony Parker. Memphis missed out on this big, um, drafting Jamal Kinsley? Um, I don't actually know much about Jamal, but uh, Tony Parker, he was a very, very, very nice player who led to many Spurs championships. With the 1982 uh, draft, Atlanta drafted Keith Edmondson. Um, one pick later, Portland um, drafted Fat Lever. Uh, so this very very nice addition next to Trey Young um, a very good defensive player gonna be very solid um, excited to see this one nothing really too big for the heat but back in 2004 they drafted Darrell Wright they didn't miss out on Jameer Nelson who was a fantastic point guard but again not a huge miss but Miami there wasn't too many huge misses or really any since this was like the biggest miss I could find Hornets also not a team that had too many misses, but um, back in 2007, they did draft Brandon Wright. They didn't miss out on Joe Kim Noah, who uh, 
who in his prime was a defensive menace, was top five in NB NBA or ugh, MVP voting one year um, back in the early 2010s. So um, again, not a huge miss, but um, definitely a miss. In 2005, the Jazz did draft Darren Williams, who was a very, 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 very solid NBA player during his prime. Um, but I would say Chris Paul was a little better, who was drafted at number four by uh, the Hornets. And yeah, yeah, not a huge miss, um, but definitely Chris Paul is definitely a little bit better than Darren Williams. Back in 2012, Sacramento had picked number five and decided to go with Thomas Robinson. Yeah. Pick number six, Portland took Damian Lillard and look at him now. Back in 2006, the Knicks have picked number 20 and took Ronaldo Balkman. Lasted six years in the NBA. Pick number 21, Phoenix took Rajon Rondo, who did lead. Um, help. Well, not lead, but helped the Celtics uh, win an NBA championship and possibly is going to help the Lakers win one this year. In 2017, LA ended up with the number two overall pick and used that on Lonzo Ball. Celtics had got pick number three. They decided to go with Jason Tatum. And this team would be nasty. Probably they wouldn't have Anthony Davis. They would probably still have B.I. on the team. But, you know, in this world... This is an absolutely crazy starting five. Again, Magic didn't have too many big misses um, with a superstar Tate, or just a, yeah, superstar, all-star caliber player taken right after. Uh, but back in 2014, they did uh, choose Dario Saric with the 12th overall pick, and Minnesota was able to get Zach Levine with the number 13. And after this season, Zach Levine is looking very, very, very solid. Uh, borderline all-star this year possible all-star next year um, so we'll see with him but yeah this team not looking too good still again Dallas did not have really any bad misses where the next player was a really solid player so we are gonna have to go back to 1994 where you know obviously they did have a better they they chose the correct player and Jason Kidd but the guy drafted right after him was Grant Hill um, so this was basically the only time I could find, um, as far as recently, where there was a superstar drafted right after. So I did just decide to go with Grant Hill. Yes, they did get Jason Kidd, but we are just giving them Grant Hill back. Um, and we'll see what this team can do. In the 2006 draft, uh, the Nets went with Josh Boone. Don't know much about him. He lasted four years in the NBA. Pick number 24 ended up being Kyle Lowry from Memphis, and uh, he has turned into an NBA champion. Back in 2012, Denver went with Quincy Miller in the second round. Right after him, Chris Middleton was taken by the Pistons, who we ended up getting rid of. And now he's an all-star caliber player and probably better than anybody on the Pistons currently. Well, let's not talk about that. Let's be happy. For the Pacers, we're going to have to go all the way back to 1986 when Indiana drafted Greg Dreeling um, with the second pick in the second round. Pick number three in the second round ended up being Dennis Rodman, one of the greatest defensive players of all time, led to many, many championships, winning multiple for the Pistons and Chicago. Absolutely ridiculous of a player. Um... For the Pelicans, we I couldn't really find anything for them. So last year they drafted Zion. The guy drafted right after them was John Morant. So I'm giving you guys John Morant. So now you guys have both the first and second overall pick from last year's draft. And this is a very, very good young core in Morant, Ingram, and Williamson. And in real life, that would be a crazy team to watch. Also, Lonzo coming off the bench is pretty nice. For the Pistons, bro, I don't even have to look at the draft to know this one. Oh my gosh, I already mentioned this one. 2003, drafted Darko. Oh my gosh, one of the worst picks of all time. When absolute, just bust. Not bust, I don't know if I would say bust. He apparently just didn't like playing basketball. Uh, but we missed out on Carmelo, Chris Bosh, and Dwayne Wade. I honestly should have given this team all three, but no, I'm just kidding. 
Uh, but yeah, we do have Carmelo Anthony, who, if we did draft him, who knows how many championships we would have won. Who knows if we would have won any? Um, but I bet we would have won multiple. <laughs> that's that's just me. Back in the 2004 draft, Toronto had the eighth pick and drafted Rafael Arujo? Arujo? Aru I don't know. He lasted three years. Pick number nine, Philadelphia decided to go with Andre Iguodala, who has become an NBA champion, multiple NBA championships, NBA Finals MVP. The starting lineup is absolutely crazy. If we go back to 2011 uh, with pick 14, Houston went with Marcus Morris, who's been a solid role player on every team he joins. Very physical, a uh, very good defensive player. But number pick number 15, Indiana took Kawhi Leonard, who has turned into an absolute superstar. Finals, multiple finals MVPs. Absolutely crazy. Possibly going to win another one this year. With pick number 29 in the 2011 draft, uh, the Spurs decide to go with Corey Joseph, um, who again has been a player. Pick number 30. Chicago took Jimmy Butler, who is definitely a better player. Um, yeah, one of, the, one of my favorite players in the league, uh, this team. Um, honestly, playoff team now. Um, would be absolutely crazy to watch this team. All right, with the fourth pick in the 1974 NBA draft. Yes, I have to go all, or sorry, pick, yeah, pick four. Phoenix selected John Shoemate, lasted five years in the league. Um, it was all right, um, but pick number five, Houston selected Bobby Jones, who uh, turned into a very, very nice player. That's so weird. They have their... They have this guy's draft year wrong. I haven't seen that. This is the only person I've ever seen where the draft year is wrong. He's round one, pick five, but 1974, not 1976. Back in 2000, when they were still the Supersonics, Seattle selected Olamide Ayedeje. Ayedeje? Not exactly 100% sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but he lasted three years in the league. Doesn't look like he did much. Next pick after that, Milwaukee took Michael Red out of Ohio State, lasted 12 years, and was a scoring machine um, in his prime. So this team is looking very, very nice also. Y'all already know. Uh, Y'all already know back in 2009, Minnesota missed on Steph Curry not once, but twice. So they are getting Steph Curry on the team now. Um, this was a, one of the biggest draft misses of all time because they did draft two point guards before him. One being Rubio and then the other one being like, was it Johnny Flynn or something? I forget, but so D'Lo's moving to the two. Chris Dobbs forms a very nice big three. Very poor defensive top th big three. Back in 2007, you guys know Portland drafted Greg Odom. Pick number two, Kevin Durant. One of the best players in the league. One of the best shooters, scorers of all time. NBA champion. NBA Finals MVP. My favorite player in the league. Absolutely nuts. This team, this starting lineup is absolutely crazy. All the way back to 1999, Golden State Warriors, with their second round pick, took Tim Young, who lasted one year in the league. Now, this was a very, very late the second round pick, but the pick right after him, Spurs took Manu Ginobili. Absolutely nuts. Helped the Spurs win multiple championships also. Him, Tony Parker, Tim Duncan, absolutely fan fantastic uh, big three for them. I didn't realize he was drafted this late, but back in 20, 2007, Marcus Gasol was drafted by the Lakers in the second round. Pick 18? Yeah, pick 18. One pick before that, Washington took Dominic McGuire, who lasted six years in the league. And doesn't look like he did much when he was in the league. So there you guys go. That's what the rosters are looking like. We are going to sim a season and see which team is going to win the NBA championship. 
Honestly, I'm looking at that Portland team. Oh my gosh. Dame, CJ, KD, Nurkic, Whiteside, Carmelo off the bench. That's absolutely crazy. That team is absolutely nuts. All right, so we still have Giannis winning MVP. 76ers ended up going 50 and 32 with Kristaps, so not too big of a difference. Uh, no older, no like player that I added won uh, any awards, which was weird. Uh, Doc Rivers went go. The record is 58 and 24, so that's really cool. Uh, we got Grant Hill on the All NBA First Team. Wow, I was not expecting him to be the one uh carmelo anthony all nba second team i figured because he's really the only good player on the pistons gilbert arenas for the bulls kd for the trailblazers uh, we got draymond green for the Cavs, pal gasol for the clippers and then steph curry for the timberwolves who makes it twice kd doesn't make it as part of the nets uh, all defensive team jimmy butler bobby jones are two guys um then we have Kawhi Leonard for the Rockets. Draymond Green for the Cavs. So that's what that's all looking like. For standings in the East, we have the Bucks still number one with the addition of Clay Thompson. So that actually makes sense because they're absolutely crazy in this. But the team seem way, way more balanced now. The Pistons still sucked. Of course, of course. Knicks, yeah, the addition of Rondo, I didn't think was going to be too good. The Kings, with the addition of Damian Lillard, the worst team in the Western Conference, but are still 29-53. The Trailblazers don't even make the playoffs. With KD, Lillard, Nurkic, Whiteside, McCollum, Carmelo, Gary Trent Jr. Oh my, that is absurd. Thunder don't make it. Um, so it seems like no team really improved too much besides the timberwolves the timberwolves killed it with curry that's you're telling me the timberwolves with curry is better than the trailblazers with kd the rockets with the addition of Kawhi leonard were worse than the timberwolves the pelicans you're telling me was better than this trailblazers team and the thunder team that's crazy um in the east the Bulls with Gilbert Arenas. So are point guards OP in this in 2K21 now? Because I haven't done too many rebuilds, but it looks like the addition of the point guards, Timberwolves with Curry, Bulls with Gilbert Arenas was absolutely crazy. Uh, the Raptors had the addition of Iggy. Uh, the Nets had Kyle Lowry. The Hawks had fat lever and they're really, really good now. The Heat. The Heat literally had Jameer Nelson and was the eighth seed, but I guess the rest of the league um, isn't exactly that good. Actually, the Pacers. I'm kind of surprised with the Pacers, not gonna lie. How are the Hornets better than the Pistons? I'm so confused. Uh, we're gonna look at league leaders here. Uh, we're gonna see Carmelo Anthony is the first guy who was added into here who is. I see with a lot of points, almost 29 a game, almost nine rebounds with six assists. Prime Carmelo on the Pistons would have been amazing, bro. Um, who else we got? Um, KD, 27. Curry on the Timberwolves, just under 27. Grant Hill, uh, almost 27. Um, nope, nope. And then Gilbert Arenas with 25. Lillard with 25, um, Jason Tatum with 24. So that's what the points are looking like. Uh, let's look at rebounds. Where's Dennis Rodman? Dennis Rodman's number two to Giannis. Then you have Marcus Gasol. Uh, who else? Who else? Who else? Pau Gasol uh, for the Clippers. Uh, Joe Kim Noah for the Hornets. Uh, for assists, we got LeBron. We got Prime Rondo, Prime Chris Paul. Um, then we have real Chris Paul. Uh, there's uh, Prime Steph Curry, Fat Lever, Tony Parker. Totally forgot about Tony Parker. So that's cool. So yeah, um, there you guys go. That's what the league leaders are looking like. I'll quickly, quickly go through uh, these stats.
that just so you guys can see but you guys are going to want to pause if you actually want to see uh your team i am going to stop on the pistons though because that is my team and i would like to see what happened there i do hate them oh my gosh that's a crazy big three that's crazy that's crazy i'm gonna keep saying that's crazy nuts kind eh, of disappointing not nuggets pistons carmelo oh my He's crazy. Uh, I, want to, I want to look at these trailblazers. I want to see these trailblazers, man. What is up with this team, bro? I totally didn't go to the end just now, I think, but whatever. Simulate the first round of the playoffs. Bro, this sim speed is absolutely crazy in 2K21. I know I'm on PC, but it's literally significantly better than 2K20 was. So hopefully on console, it's a lot better. But um, literally no, no upset there is no upset wow you don't normally see this but boston made it out 4-0 that's yeah they were significantly better than atlanta uh let's see we got the warriors knocked out lakers get knocked out wow and then philly and chicago both get knocked out so we got the one and two seed and then the one and three seed seem like this round bucks are gone dallas is gone so clippers yeah and celtics little surprising not gonna lie but let's simulate the finals and the clippers do end up still winning it with Kawhi Leonard being your mvp they had the addition of Pau gasol um boston had the addition of a shooting guard i know what shooting guard was it though eddie jones that's what i thought so there you guys go clippers still reign supreme an absolutely fantastic defensive team apparently because they blew the celtics out by 27 points so there you guys go hope you guys enjoyed this video i am looking forward to bringing you guys more of these kind of unrealistic weird uh simulation videos in 2k21 i am looking forward to this year bringing you guys awesome uh content hope you guys enjoyed peace out mm -hmm.